Test, 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 test. Okay. <clears throat> Hi, all, and welcome to another edition of What's Moving the Markets by Philip Conter for FX Pro. I'll be waiting for a couple of more minutes for a few people to join us, um, and uh, then we can start this broadcast properly. But hopefully, you can see uh, the screen with the FX Pro uh, logo and um, the name of the webinar as well. So the broadcast. We'll start at seven uh, properly. We'll just wait for a few more people to come in and join us. I can't hear your voice. Uh, okay. Um, Can you all hear me? Is it all coming through okay? Just um, uh, some people are unable to hear me, I suppose. But uh, yeah, hopefully this is all good. Hopefully this is all good. Yeah, excellent. Email is saying yes. Good, okay, great guys. Now, let's start the broadcast properly and uh, <clears throat> let's keep this very informal and uh, kind of uh, beneficial for you. So I would encourage you to ask me some questions if you have any. Uh, if you want me to cover anything in particular, I'll be more than happy to do so. Um, there is quite a bit of a volatility uh, back in the markets now, um, especially after uh, Easter holidays, so Friday and Monday uh, markets were closed in US and also in in, uh, in eurozone uh, in, in most of the European countries as well so <clears throat> since the markets reopened uh, they were driven by this uncertainty about the the trade wars and the, the Chinese response to what uh, President Trump did and so on so um, quite a lot of volatility in the markets in general but plenty to talk about um, today because obviously we'll be getting ready for uh, what what might happen or what, what is likely to happen this this week as well and we also have a very special non-farm payroll webinar scheduled for 12 o'clock uk time 12 o'clock uk time on friday 6th of april uh, ahead of that uh, very important number that's going to be published um us unemployment date but before we start talking about all of that stuff uh, I'm going to say hi and welcome to a few people. And then as we go along, uh, Astrid, uh, Shirag, Don, Imelda, Leon, Sam, uh, another Samuel, uh, anybody else who's joining us as well. So you, you're more than welcome to come in and, and uh, come into the chat or a question section and ask uh, if you have any questions. Uh, my name is Philip Concher. I'll be your presenter for today. Um, I uh, run a company called TraderCast.com uh, and I work very closely with FX Pro guys, especially in UK. Um, and I'm delivering this uh, weekly webinars for them. Um, it would be lovely to meet some of you in person from time to time uh, when the live events are on. Um, it's, it's good to kind of uh, put the face to the name as well. Uh, and uh, also, you're more than welcome to come and uh, uh, trial TraderCast as well. That's uh, sponsored by FX Pro. And if you need to know more about it, uh, just ask your account manager. If you, need to, if you need to get hold of me, my name is Philip at TraderCast.com. Now, um, from the uh, legal information, if you've watched any of these webinars before, you are pretty much um, uh, certain to, to come across these uh, disclaimers at, at some point. Um, and uh, th this is no different as well. Basically, uh, you should understand what the leverage is and the risks that uh, margined uh, trading carries. Um, and uh, if you need to know more about that, please feel free to speak to your FX Pro account manager, especially if you're trading CFDs, if you're trading spread betting, if you're trading margin Forex, it's important to understand all the risks associated um, with uh, trading um, these financial markets. From the uh, FX Pro regulation point of view, uh, FX Pro 
are uh, non-advisory brokerage. They are basically execution-only brokers, and uh, they they are regulated uh, by um, uh, FCA, and uh, they're also regulated by uh, Cyprus Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, they offer negative balance protection, segregated accounts, and protected client funds. And yet again, if you need to know more about this, feel free to speak to your account manager. Uh, now, um, if I do get excited and start uh, talking uh, with a high-pitched voice or uh, talking really fast about certain things, um, because what I'm intending to do today is to go into the live markets rather than uh, just uh, provide you with the slides and, and static information. Um, these are my opinions and experiences. They should not be considered to be advice. Uh, this information that I'm talking about is available in public domain and therefore it's not in intended to provide your trading or investment and advi adv uh, advice. It does not take in consideration your, circ uh, your individual circumstances or investment or trading objectives. Uh, so it's for general information only. Um, and uh, as I said, it's, it's just opinions and experiences rather than advice. So that's the legal bit. Um, uh, kind of taken care of. Now, the other thing that I want to talk about, uh, hi, uh, these are the, the, the golden rules for new traders. And uh, I know I, I'm recognizing some names. Um, uh, hi, Mr. Atta, welcome back. Um, so I am recognizing some names. So I, I won't really go through all of this uh, into too much details, but uh, I feel they help, you know, there, there are certain rules for new traders and, uh, you know, the basic one would be never add to a losing trade, never lose more than a certain percentage of your trading capital on any one trade, never trade anything you don't really understand. Um, yeah. Uh, trade in the direction of the trend in your trading time frame. Uh, only look for low risk, high reward trades or high probability setups when you don't have signals you do not have to trade you can be long short and in cash cash is also position as well uh, trade your plan your system your signals the chart and price action and not your opinions bias or predictions and that's quite difficult because majority of the people when they're new they come to a trading uh, financial markets, they suddenly start reading certain articles or reports or doing their own research and they seek to find the research which is justifying their point of view um, and uh, they tend to trade on what they believe uh, will happen uh, and they might be right but uh, and it's exciting uh, to do that but uh, markets can stay irrational for so much longer than anybody else can stay solvent so uh, make sure you do not trade what you think, trade the value that you find and trade what you see, trade the signals that markets give you, uh, trade the chart rather than what you think will happen. Uh, and that's actually quite important because a little, little bit later on we'll be talking about uh, the economic data for this week, for like uh, tomorrow and day after tomorrow. And there is a couple of really important events which will significantly increase market volatility. So uh, front running those type of events, tier one data uh, are usually very dangerous and uh, because the volatility increased significantly. So, you know, you should, you should be aware of them as well. Uh, find a trading methodology that fits your personality. This is also very important. Don't trade before you have a complete trading plan, including rules on entries, exits, and risk management. The size of your wins and losses determines your trading success. Your risk management rules will determine the success of your technical trading system. And that's the basics of it. So now, uh, if you need to get hold of uh, anybody, uh, you probably have these numbers already. Uh, but um, what I'll do is I'll go back to this screen and bring it back a little bit later because I know that people are coming in and out of these events on a regular basis. Now, we have plenty of time today. We have plenty of time today to talk about um, financial markets. And uh, what we have here is this is Euro dollar, this is sterling dollar, this is dollar yen, this is here Euro sterling, this is Aussie dollar, this is dollar CAD, uh, WTI crude, uh, gold, which appears to be under pressure at the moment, FTSE moving higher, S&P moving higher, Dow Jones moving higher, and also German DAX 
uh, looking for uh, a direction as well. So before I go and talk about the, in the individual markets, um, I would like to go into the actual FX Pro um, calendar and just show you what's important, what's coming up tomorrow and day after tomorrow, which will significantly uh, impact your positions. So you should be aware of that. And then we will go and look into the individual markets, which could be affected by this data and how it might react. And hopefully this, this would be uh, informative for you and, and beneficial. Hi, Robert. Um, hi, Robert, welcome back. Amos, welcome back. Thank you guys, thank you guys. Okay, so the first thing that you should really do, uh, you, you know, you should go to the FX Pro uh, landing page and go into the trading tools. They're, they're here, trading tools, and go into the economic calendar in order to figure out what's coming up um, uh, today, tomorrow, which might impact your uh, trading decisions. And, um, this morning we received some consumer price index uh, from from Euro, Eurozone in particular, um, and that came in slightly worse than expected here in year and year uh, kind of terms. Uh, and then what happened a little bit earlier is um, about a quarter past one UK time, we received this number here, which is ADP employment change. Uh, this is for the mon month of March, the previous month. And this number uh, monitors uh, unemployment uh, in US. Uh, and this number is normally used as a forecasting tool uh, for um, uh, for uh, the non-farm payroll, which will come in, uh, which will come in tomorrow. Uh, so the forecasted number was 205,000. Um, the previous number published was 246, and the current number that came in was 241. So it was much better than the forecasted number. And uh, last month uh, with non-farm payroll, we got over 300,000. Uh, jobs created and that was seen as a very very positive very very positive um oh amos uh well well done if you're using your phone uh we miss you on tradercast your 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 membership is still open and you're more than welcome to uh to come in and join us uh, for uh, for the broadcast as well. We have a, a small small but ever-growing group of uh, South Africans in there. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure you might, uh, you, you might be more than welcome to come in and join them. Uh, but yeah, your, your account is open. Uh, feel free, come in anytime you want, buddy. It's, it's open for you. You're always welcome. You're absolutely always welcome. Sam, uh, welcome back. Thank you for joining us as well. Um, for today's webinar. Guys, I know some people did come across these webinars before. Some people did meet me either in person or attended a TraderCast uh, 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 kind of a community and, and watched the broadcast throughout the day. So they kind of know the way uh, I work. For, for some of you, this is brand new. So I would really like you to feel completely relaxed and uh, feel free uh, to, to ask questions because your questions would definitely help. Um, and that the, your questions would guide me towards um, uh, topics that I could be covering, um, which are of relevance to you. Okay, so from the economic calendar that's happened today, uh, I would be uh, watching um, a couple of other things uh, for tomorrow uh, and also for Friday. So, and I'll go through this very, very quickly. And yet again, you can get to this economic calendar through your FX Pro uh, website into a trading tools economic calendar. It's it's a free resource for you. I know some people are using Forex Factory or FX Street or investing.com or uh, there's plenty of uh, economic calendars that are uh, given to you um, as a free resource. Um, whichever one you're using, they're, they're more or less all of them have uh, their own um, uh, kind of uh, data as well. But uh, the important bit for us to know is that tomorrow is Thursday, 
from the data point of view, uh, there is very little overnight in Asia. Um, and then uh, in the morning, we have uh, the PMIs for various European countries. Uh, services PMI, uh, it, it's, it's a big number that is closely watched. Uh, and especially here in UK, um, that uh, PMI number is released by uh, Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply. Uh, and it's, a, it's, a, it's an indication of the economic situation in the UK services sector. And UK services sector is a big um, uh, element uh, of, of the, the, the economy in general. So it's closely, closely watched. Um, basically according to to what it is uh it, it it's uh it captures the overview and condition of sales and employment um and uh normally high readings uh, are seen as very positive for um uh sterling because you know it's good for the gdp uh also um the bank of england is closely watching these uh, numbers as well uh and uh, they are uh, deciding uh, on on their uh, monetary policy based on on these type of readings that are coming up uh, as well so, so th there's various european countries publishing that data uh, and obviously the germany and the eurozone itself and uk would quite likely be a very very important uh, for us to keep an eye on uh, ppi data is coming up at 10 o'clock i think there is a question now and then uh, initial jobless claims uh, that's the big data that's coming up in us at half past one before the markets open and this data very basically monitors how many people have claimed for us um, unemployment uh, insurance i.e the benefit um, and uh, unlike some of the other numbers higher numbers are normally seen as bearish for the dollar bearish for US equities because that means more people are unemployed. Uh, if the number comes in less than 225,000, that's seen as a good or positive. So therefore, uh, you know, people are getting employment, jobs, and so on. Um, so that's the one that that will potentially increase some volatility um, uh, tomorrow. Uh, and then. Um, on Friday, okay, so there's a FOMC member, he's speaking at six o'clock as well. But the big data for this coming week is really on Friday, and um, that's a non farm payroll number. Uh, so uh, we have a, a webinar scheduled for 12 o'clock UK time. Uh, it's basically an hour and a half ahead of these numbers being released. Um, and then we will go through a range of different uh, markets um, which could potentially be impacted by, by uh, this release. Um, average hourly earnings are also closely important. Um, data that's coming up at half past one tomorrow. Um, and that's pretty much it for uh, this week. There's a Baker Hughes oil rigs, so how many rigs are basically working in US or internationally, and that gives us the indication of the uh, production. But the big, big data is going to be US unemployment, and the forecasted data, forecasted number is that, um, uh, that the number will come in as 198,000. Um, if it comes in much higher than let's say 200,000, uh, it would be seen as probably very bullish for the US equity indices. And it could be seen as very bullish for US dollar. Uh, the logic is that the more people getting employment, uh, the economy is getting stronger, uh, people will be earning more, therefore they'll have disposable income to spend, good for a consumer, good for the retailers. Um, and also these numbers are closely watched by the Federal Reserve, uh, who are uh, reading uh, into these numbers uh, with a view to adjust or forecast their uh, monetary policy. So if they see another amazing number, same like what we last month, we got 313,000 people uh, create uh, kind of jobs created, which was significantly higher than uh, just the 200,000 forecasted, um, that caused uh, a fairly substantial bullish volatility and explosion to the upside in US equity indices like Dow Jones and S&P and also impacted US dollar as well.
now um sorry i'm gonna go from the calendar very quickly uh into the onto the charts but uh, i just got a, a message here uh, a question um I saw on Bloomberg TV that China has slapped uh, back some taxes on USA. How is it affecting US dollar now and in the future? Uh, a very good question. I think that that uh, initial reaction uh, uh, already happened uh, this morning um, with uh, the US equity markets opening substantially lower. Um, Dow Jones was uh, at 1.500 points uh, in red after being uh, in a bullish mood yesterday. Uh, Nasdaq uh, news were all over the Nasdaq saying uh, at some point today, Nasdaq is in a correction uh, state because it dropped 10% from the, the, the current all-time highs and, and so on and so on. And then we saw a bit of a recovery, but very good question. I'll, I'll talk about US dollar straight away. Uh, but uh, guys, if you're using uh, economic calendar, that's the data that you need to follow. Uh, and that's the, the big one. So if you want to come and join us for uh, the non farm payroll webinar on Friday, uh, 6th of April at 12 o'clock UK time, uh, you're more than welcome. So that's in two days time, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, one last thing before I go into the actual markets, uh, I would like you to possibly check out um, FX Pro blog. Um, it's it's a very good uh, a site as well, provided free of charge to you. Uh, you can get in here and get a summary of the macro news in the morning, what's coming up, what's happened overnight, uh, the data that's coming up in the economic calendar. If you click on this, you can read. And then you are getting some technical analysis. In this case, today, uh, Wall Street and dollar yen was published and also dollar card and uh, Canadian dollar Japanese yen. Um, and then Alex was talking about um, ADP employment uh, and the uh, reaction uh, in a US dollar uh, that, that actually happened. So that's uh, a blog.fxpro.co.uk, a very good site. And uh, it, it gives you a nice summary uh, uh, of what's happening. Hi, Adriana, welcome back or welcome for the first time. I'm, I'm not really sure if I'm recognizing your name or not. But um, okay, so let's go into the actual markets and see if we can talk about anything that could be of interest. So what we are seeing at the moment, we are seeing this uh, nice breakout higher in US equity indices. Uh, we are seeing FTSE moving higher. We're seeing dollar yen moving higher, uh, euro dollar under pressure, cable going sideways. Um, euro sterling is pushing lower, Aussie dollar moving higher, dollar card under pressure. Um, gold initially, uh, spike to 1350 and now it's pulling back and we are seeing WTI crude uh, at around 63. So uh, before I do anything else, I do want to talk to you about uh, dollar itself. So let's start with the dollar index and then we will work our way through euro dollar and uh, other currency pairs, possibly even gold. And then we will definitely need to talk about some equity indices as well and hopefully leave you with with some levels uh, that could be of interest so now let me just check uh, okay This is a question to everybody, guys. It's a, it's a fairly small group in today, so uh, feel free come in and ask uh, ask questions, uh, and uh, that'll be that'll be great. That'll be absolutely great if you have any questions. Okay, so this is the chart for uh, U.S. dollar index, and uh, 
This index follows the movement of US dollar currency against the basket of six other currencies, um, Euro, Sterling, Swiss, Japanese yen, Norwegian krona and Canadian dollar. And uh, it's closely, closely watched uh, financial instrument by anybody who trades currencies, but also anybody who trades commodities, because most of the commodities are traded in dollars. So if we are seeing uh, uh, a bearish reaction in dollar index, that's normally translated as bullish for any currency pair that's traded uh, um, uh, with, with the US dollar as a secondary currency. So uh, if uh, dollar index is falling, then Euro dollar tends to go higher. If dollar index is falling, then sterling dollar, i.e. cable, tends to go higher. If dollar index is rallying, then dollar Japanese yen tends to react positively. If uh, dollar index is breaking out higher, then dollar CAD tends to break out higher. So uh, it's, you, 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 you can understand where I'm, where I'm getting uh, with this. But um, this appears, this is the weekly time frame, guys. We have the sequence of lower highs and lower lows. Uh, the price action is currently capped by falling 20, 50, and also 200 period moving averages. And I've also already uh, added a couple of these trend lines just to kind of help illustrate this uh, downtrend or confirm this downtrend. So, so the weekly is under pressure, bears are in control, and also we have this uh, additional uh, resistance up here. So these red lines up here are considered to be uh, resistances. Hi, kindly present in layman terms. This is all new to me. Uh, okay, I, I, I'll try. Uh, but I, I would I would know where to start um, because I might alienate some other people who are already experienced. Uh, so I'll try. But if if you have a question, uh, just ask and uh, I'll I'll try and answer it, uh, Mr. Puma. Uh, just ask and I'll try and clarify it. But uh, thank you for asking. Okay. So the price is under pressure here in dollar index, currently capped by this 90, 20, 90, 60. Um, it appears to be bearish from the daily and four hourly and hourly timeframes. So intraday timeframes appear to be um, capped by this zone up here. Only a confirmed breakout and a daily price closing above this falling resistance trend line uh, could open up the way for the retest of this additional upside resistances towards 91.50 and 92. Now, if I go down to a daily time frame, we can see that this is uh, developing a sideways channeling or a trading range. And uh, these type of uh, ranges uh, either become a basing uh, pattern. So you, you have this sideways consolidation, sideways consolidation, and then the trend changes, changes, and that's usually something um, which could be triggered by uh, that event that we were talking about here. So uh, on Friday at half past one UK time, uh, when this number comes up and gets published, and if you want to come and join us uh, for the webinar, you'll actually see it uh, happening shortly after we finish the webinar. So if the number comes in much better, then if, if the number comes in and says 350,000 jobs created in US in the past 30 days, uh, that's likely to cause uh, a dollar index to potentially move higher. Uh, so that's the kind of logic behind because the if, if, if jobs are created, then Federal Reserve is likely um, going to carry on increasing interest rates. And if the central bank is tightening uh, and increasing rates, that's usually seen as bullish for that country's currency. Uh, so that's the, that's the logic behind it. Um, is there no provision for one to send chat image to you for better explanation? A little bit confused. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really sure, sure what you mean. You mean chart? Ch charts or you want to have a chat uh, like like a like a talk 
Um, chart uh, unfortunately not not uh, it, not during these webinars but uh, uh, if you join uh, tradercast uh, you can go and speak to your account manager and if they say that you qualify uh, then you you can you can do that and uh, I'll, I'll show you what uh, let me see if that that uh, where is the this one now they're all they're logged out. Uh, yeah, I'll try and try and log in. Uh, and uh, ah, there you go. I'll try and log in. So uh, if you come and join uh, join us in TraderCast, which is uh, a platform, a community platform uh, provided to FX Pro clients, it's it's uh, your your trial. Uh, access is provided by FX Pro. then what you can do is you can go into charts and uh, save your image so if, let's say you want to ask a presenter a particular question and you're saying I am looking at I don't know uh, this level here and uh, I would like to consider it to be a support and I'm looking at these levels up here as my resistances um, and uh, what do you think of those levels or Whatever, whatever your question is, um, then you can save that and uh, post it. And then as, as you do that, it goes into community. So it goes in here uh, and then you can write your question here. Um, and then when you post it, when you share, it goes in here in the community so other people can see your questions um, and they can click. They can click on that, uh, give you the feedback, uh, the presenters, or they, you can come in here and get into the, the chat rooms and speak to other people uh, about anything that could be of interest to you. And uh, obviously this is quiet now, but this gets busier during the, the broadcast. So so then in these chat rooms, you can have opportunity to, to ask as many questions as you want and discuss anything and even refer to the charts which are posted in the community. So that's it's a slightly different thing, but um, if, you speak to your account manager and, and if they say that you qualify to get access to TraderCast, we would love to welcome you to TraderCast. It's, it's not a problem at all. Um, I, I can't, yeah, you, you need, I, I, they have the criteria. I don't know what the criteria is. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm doing what I'm told. So um, they tell me activate this guy and I do. And uh, it's it's at the end of the day it's their decision because they they are they, they they're telling me what to do. But anyway, going back to going back to the dollar index and then. Uh, but thank you for your interest. Thank you for your interest. Um, now this is uh, this is what's happening uh, at the moment with dollar index. So it's cut by 90 or 90, 20, 90, 60, and these type of uh, sideways channeling ranges they tend to do two things. The first thing is they break out on the upside and they tend to do something like this and then trend changes. So let's say we get much better number on Friday uh, and uh, that causes dollar to rally uh, and something like this might happen. So a breakout. So the breakout towards 91.50, uh, quite often you have a breakout and the retest of the previous resistance uh, and the resistance works. Look. The price is rejected, price is rejected, price is rejected, price is rejected. So at some point they get broken uh, and then the price spikes higher to test the next level of resistance, the next level where uh, sellers might come in and, um, and uh, try to short sell, uh, through short sell it again. Uh, now, the other thing that can possibly happen is uh, if this uh, trading range breaks to the downside so let's say this current sequence of the um, highs holds or maybe we see a spike into this zone so so maybe something like this a spike into that zone and then massive sell lower uh, a confirmed loss of this shaded area here towards 88 40 88 level uh, for the dollar index uh, would likely trigger a very much bearish reaction um, 
and then something like this might happen and then we could see a, an, an additional push lower uh, towards 87 86 50 even 86 to the downside so then it means that this uh, current uh, us dollar bearishness and the selling pressure in us dollar uh, is continuing so the, the key levels for you guys to watch uh, especially ahead of friday's non-farm payroll are as follows dollar index is currently supported by 88 40 88 um, and capped by 90, 90, 20, 90, 60. Only a confirmed breakout either above here or below here uh, would tell you which side is in control and therefore uh, it might give you the opportunity to, to trade uh, that breakout if you choose to do so. Now, let's translate this into uh, Euro dollar, for example, uh, and maybe gold, because if dollar goes higher, that's usually seen as bearish for gold. If dollar goes higher, that's normally seen as bearish for euro dollar. If this goes higher, as it is attempting attempting to go to to, to break out higher here, uh, then that's normally seen as bullish for dollar yen, and so on and so on. Okay, so let's talk about uh, euro dollar, guys. Um, and yet again, uh, my charts already have plotted these resistances, which are colored in red, and they also have supports, which are colored in blue. So uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm looking at the moment, and yet again, euro dollar is another uh, currency pair, which can very likely uh, have a massive increase in volatility on Friday. Uh, at half past one, because this non-farm uh, non payrolls, U.S. unemployment data, um, if we see a, a, a reaction in U.S. dollar, will quite likely have exuberant reaction here in uh, in the euro dollar as well. So what I want to show you is we have something that appears, there is that sideways channeling range which initially break out to the upside. Uh, it's exactly the same thing as what we saw here. Uh, which is developing in in dollar index. So it's going sideways, 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 either break out to the upside or loses support and sells off. So in euro dollar, that was going on for a considerable amount of time and then it broke to the upside. Now, uh, this is the weekly time frame. So each one of these candles is one trading week. So you can see that the price is creating high, low, high, low, high. So sequence of higher highs and sequence of higher lows. You can see that price is currently supported by this rising trend line. Therefore, bulls are in control. Bullish traders um, are in control at the moment. But we are seeing these wicks forming in the candles which are suggesting that there is some selling pressure at the moment, but the trend is not broken just yet. Okay, so if we go to a daily time frame, uh, we can see that uh, this potentially is developing uh, a multiple top formation uh, with the initial support pointing down here at 122.50, uh, one even this level here, 122.40. Uh, that's that's a big, uh, big level of support. So, uh, so let me just move that up here. So that level there is the actual support, 122.40. Um, as long as the price stays uh, above that uh, 122.40, uh, bulls are still in control and potentially we could see something like this develop. So pull back, pull back, pull back to this level here and then buyers come in and return and try to push the price higher. Okay, and uh, the initial resistance on the upside is at 123.50, uh, 124, 124.12, 124.60, uh, 125. So something like that. And then that confirms the existence of this trend. You can see that this consolidation here lasted a very, very long time. And then we saw a breakout and the retest and so on. So the same or a similar consolidation could be happening here as well, uh, but it needs to be confirmed. Now, uh, the bearish view is if we are sitting in a camp and we feel that uh, 
a Federal Reserve is likely going to hike rates again, uh, and therefore the, the US dollar might break out to the upside, uh, then a confirmed loss of this area here. So the price action closing uh, below, closing below, so doing something like this, and flushing lower below this shaded area, uh, and then retesting that uh, a level from underneath doing something like that then this becomes a very important neckline of this multiple top and these multiple tops tend to be uh, substantial reversal patterns uh, then bears are in control and they would open up the way for the retest of these further downsides so a red candle closing below this shaded area here below 122.40, 122.60, indicates that bearish sentiment is uh, more dominant uh, and therefore uh, that would open up the way for a deeper corrective move towards 121.90, 121.50, uh, 120.65, even towards 121.1950 over a longer period time over a longer period of time so just to summarize this uh euro dollar is currently supported by 122.40 122.16 and initially capped by 123.50 123.50 to the upside okay great so um i i'm trying to keep this uh very basic and uh simple so uh, um, is this is this uh is this simple enough for you guys do you need me to go into a um, shorter time frame? So something like this developing. So you can see that this is four hourly time frame. Price action is capped. Uh, and then we see a, a consolidation, loss, retest. Then we see the consolidation here, loss, and then retest. Then what we are seeing here is another consolidation and these type of consolidations they, they they are symmetrical in their nature so this many points added down then this many points added down and this many points added down brings you to this 12240 and so on and so on and what i'm showing you here is the sequence of continuation patterns in a shorter term time frame but yet again pointing to the same or a similar area of interest um, which is a, a significant support to anybody who is looking to trade euro sterling in uh, a slightly longer term time frame therefore end of day four hourly or hourly rather than intraday rather than intraday Okay, now, um, would you like me to cover another currency pair or would you like me to talk about maybe gold or Dow Jones? Uh, I'll, I'll wait for a minute or two for somebody to reply. Uh, you, you tell me what you want to cover. You tell me what you would prefer to see covered and I'll cover that. And maybe I should uh, just start with a fresh Hi Sam, welcome. Hi Sam, welcome. Uh, Sam is saying, can you please cover sterling dollar? Absolutely, yes, with pleasure. Thank you for asking Sam. Uh, let's cover sterling dollar. Okay, okay. So, are you are you looking at selling dollar from any particular uh, trend or a time frame or So this is, um, yet again, I, I'll need to delete some of this stuff because it's um, already. Uh, nine until, 
No, what I what I meant is uh, what time frame do you use to trade, not uh, time of the day? Um, okay, maybe I didn't. Okay, so. Um, Or end of day. Um, so I'll start with the the daily, and then and then we can we can work out that way. Okay. Now, uh, so sterling dollar is rallying, guys. Sterling dollar is currently uh, quite bullish, um, and there are some uh, fundamental reasons why sterling dollar uh, is behaving as such. Um, I don't know how many of you uh, are monitoring the economic calendar on a regular basis, but if you remember when we were talking about the economic calendar and important data that's coming up, which will drive the volatility in US dollar. Uh, last month, we had uh, Mark Carney, who is a chairman uh, of uh, Bank of England. Okay, so Sam is saying 30 minutes, one hour. Brilliant, that gives me plenty of scope, thanks. Um, so, Bank of England Chairman Mark Carney, he was uh, saying, um, uh, sorry, uh, Governor, he was saying, uh, guys, inflation is high. Economy warrants hikes in the base rate. I feel that the markets and market participants might be surprised by the speed of the forthcoming rate hikes and also by the levels of the future interest rates. Now, as such, he almost telegraphed to the market that he is likely going to hike rates um, very soon and markets is forecasting uh, the first rate hike from the Bank of England in May, uh, and as such, that's actually quite bullish for sterling currency across the range of other uh, 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 currency pairs and, and other currencies, but uh, sterling dollar appears to be bullish. There is lots of uncertainty with the Brexit, uh, but at the moment, just looking at this chart uh, with your naked eye, without too much uh, indicators or uh, any kind of sophistication, we can very simply say this is creating a sequence of higher highs and higher lows, therefore it's uptrending. The price action is currently supported by rising 20 and also 50 period moving averages, but it's currently capped by 200 period moving average up here at 142.60. So these are the levels, these are the ranges that uh, traders would be keeping a close eye on. Now, from the daily point of view, we also know that this trend is confirmed by various trend lines now. So these trend lines here are weekly trend lines and these trend lines here are daily trend lines. So anybody who is looking at cable at the moment uh, and in particular cable ahead of Friday's non-farm payroll is keeping an eye on these current lows um, at 120, sorry, 140, uh, one spot 40. It's a nice and round number uh, uh, as such. Um, very, very important support at the moment. Um, initial upside is capped by uh, these lows here, these highs, these lows there, and these highs at 140. 
94 call it 141 so let's let's be uh, kind of uh, more precise and let's call it 141 and the reason why 141 is traders tend to remember round numbers much easier and they tend to have the uh, buy and sell orders they have to have their stop losses they have to have the take profit levels around round numbers Okay, so weekly is uptrending, daily is uptrending, four hourly is also uptrending. And you're seeing this consolidation breakout, consolidation breakout, consolidation breakout, consolidation breakout. This is exactly what we were looking at um, Euro dollar earlier on, if, if you remember. Exactly the same thing, uh, this, uh, what I was showing, showing to you as a continuation uh, pattern. So what we're seeing at the moment is we are seeing this which uh, could appear to be uh, bearish so if we see a much better than expected non-farm payroll number on friday cable could possibly sell and flush into this area here towards 140 139 48 uh, and that will be the first level at which bullish traders would return and try and defend it a confirmed loss of that level so something like this uh, would open up the way for the retest of this 139.50 even 139 at which bullish traders would also try and return and uh, 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 kind of uh, look for a support look for a value and so on the other alternative is if that doesn't happen and instead we see a breakout and the breakout would initially be capped by this uh, zone up here at 141 followed by 141.50 uh, and a breakout which is then confirmed by the retest i.e. previous resistance now newly found support would open up the way for the retest of this additional upsides towards 142 and higher and um, that would also be capped by this breakout here and uh, it, 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 would, it would then cause um, this sequence uh, to be retested again from, uh, the, from the, the, the trend line point of view, which is then lost and then retested from underneath. So something like this retested from underneath and uh, that would tell us which way, uh, which way this might go. Uh, from the, the data point of view or a macro point of view, uh, if we see some really bad news or uh, bad information, bad comments uh, in relation to Brexit, for example, uh, or maybe uh, Bank of England uh, comes in and appears to be ultra dovish uh, now saying, oh, you know, when we're talking about these um, rate hikes but that that might not happen then uh majority of the traders who are looking at this from the shorter term time frame i hourly uh or uh, 15 minutes or lower people who are looking to scalp this uh, they are definitely looking at uh, this 38.2 fib and 200 period moving average uh, from this swing high here uh, which is dated 26 27th of march all the way down to this current low on 29th of march so basically from this impulsive move lower you have retracement which is creating the sequence of slightly higher highs slightly higher lows but it's capped by this heavy resistance up here and that heavy resistance needs to be broken uh, in order for us to see a move higher uh, um, if it holds then bears are still in control uh, and that would open up the way for the retest of this area down here 140 139 48. Uh, okay guys uh, any more Quick questions. We are coming to uh, the end of uh, today's uh, webinar. Thank you for your questions. They, 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 they were all very good. Uh, you guys are very engaging, but uh, let me know if you want me to cover anything else. Uh, we, we talked briefly about uh, this. This is uh, Dow Jones uh, breaking out to the upside. Uh, there is a, a bit of a, a positivity now in uh, US equity indices. Uh, the initial uh, the initial uh, opening was very bearish uh, and that was um, I think Amos was uh, talking about this uh, that was triggered by trade wars uh, so yesterday we had this big reversal candle here so you're looking at the big reversal candle and then this today's candle dipped lower 
and look at this buying pressure now. So when you're looking at this candle in, in end of day time frame, uh, this candle will be finished at nine o'clock tonight. So this candle will be finished in about an hour and 10 minutes. So if this candle finishes as it is, um, it would confirm that bulls are in control and they are buying this support, they're defending this support uh, with a view to potentially uh, open up uh, the way for the retest of this 24,350, uh, maybe even higher, uh, 24,425, uh, 24,700 uh, area uh, from uh, the kind of Dow Jones point of view. And uh, I, I know some of you are very new, but Dow Jones is equity index. Uh, can we look at uh, card Japanese yen? Uh, okay, we can try and do that. Um, Are you are you looking at this uh, on one hourly and four hourly? Um, so, okay, I'll try and do that very quickly because uh, we are running out of time. Uh, card Japanese yen. I don't think I have the chart open. Uh, I don't even think that I was looking at it. Euro Japanese yen uh, dollar card. Okay, let me try and find it. Uh, so we have a card, card Japanese yen. Yeah, what? Um, what? Are you bullish, bearish? Are you looking to short? You're looking to buy? Uh, are you looking at any particular level? Uh, is is um, is anything of interest to you? I'm I'm not asking you to tell me what you're doing but just um, trying to engage with you to see if you are if you're looking at it from a particular point of view um, card Japanese yen uh, here we go uh, looking at going long okay uh, in one hourly. So this is the basic chart. So let's go and put a, a bit of a template on. I have one which is called white with uh, moving averages. I also have another one with um, stochastics uh, as well. So uh, so in an hourly time frame, uh, your prevailing trend is identified in daily and four hourly. Uh, and if you are looking at this uh, from these two points of view, this is actually a really really nice development. So uh, this here is uh, your left shoulder. Uh, this here appears to be a head uh, for, for this inverse head and shoulder. And this, we sorry, man. Uh, and this appears to be a right shoulder here. Uh, looking at this from uh, the neckline point of view, uh, the neckline is going this way. So it's a little bit sloping. It's not not ideal, uh, but even this can be considered to be a neckline. So um, a couple of uh, levels to work with from the neckline point of view. Uh, this one here, 82, 80, 82, 60, uh, and then another area of interest uh, for the neckline would be exactly where we are at the moment. So this zone here at 8340. Um, if this does play out as an inverse head and shoulder pattern, and yet again, I I don't really understand the fundamentals for this currency pair. Uh, I'm not looking at it actively. I'm just telling you what I see on the chart. Um, if we see a breakout of this, uh, something like this developing, a breakout, uh, a nice little retest, um, then 
the distance of the head uh, normally uh, traders who would be trading this inverse head and shoulder pattern would take the distance of the head to the neckline or maybe even shoulder to the neckline for a little bit more conservative traders and they would add it up to the breakout but um, majority of the people who are looking at this they would take from this high from this low to this neckline and extend it up and that gives us this 8850 which is the previous low here as well so uh, a measured symmetrical move higher uh, and majority of the people who are looking to do that uh, would likely uh, consider this area here to be the area of a significant support therefore they would likely be considering to put their stop losses down here so uh, bullish above 83.40 um, majority of the people who are looking to uh, engage uh, from the bullish point of view uh, would be considering appropriate levels for their stop losses uh, around here or just below here so about 60 point stop based in daily or four hourly um, and majority of the people who are looking to do that from the bullish point of view uh, would be doing a couple of things so the first one is they would take the fibs from here to here uh, to give them uh, a retracement they would take the fib from here to here to give them a retracement they would take the fib from here to here to give them the retracement and then they they would plot those lines they would do something like this um, and they would say this is my resistance so if the price does hit to that level then they would likely consider it to be uh, a um, profit taking level uh, profit taking level so here here or here so they're looking to take profit take profit take profit uh, there is another one from the shorter point of view so if you're trading this in an hourly time frame or lower uh, it's this area here that 80 uh, 84 fifth sorry uh, no this one here um, this area here this low uh, would also be considered 8380 so a breakout 8380 first level of uh, resistance um, above that 84 84 85 85 50 86 um, it does appear to be bullish above 8340 uh, alternatively and there is always alternatively uh, in any financial markets uh, if something like this happens and we see a considerable spike lower and uh, price action returning below uh, this uh, current significant low which appears to be that falling neckline, a perceived neckline. The only way for this to be confirmed as an inverse head and shoulder is if we see a daily breakout above. Uh, then um, below 8270, uh, it, uh, the, the, the sentiment is changed, the bears are in control, and then something like this might happen loss of support retest of underneath sellers come in uh, majority of the sellers would be shorting below 80 to 70 putting their stop above 8340 with the view to take profit down to 80 um, 70 80 50 uh, area uh, so that will be kind of the the opposite or the reverse trade now guys uh, it was lovely 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 talking to you all um yet again uh, a big disclaimer, uh, anything that we discuss here is available in a public domain, so therefore it should not be considered to be uh, advice for your investment or trading. Uh, uh, Claytus, thank you very much. Uh, feel free, come into the TraderCast as well. Come and join us uh, if you wish uh, or if you can. I don't know, speak to your account manager. Uh, but... Um, uh guys lovely talking to you all thank you all very much for watching and listening uh come and join us on friday at 12 o'clock uh, for non-farm payroll uh, webinar and uh, your questions really help uh, they really really do uh robert uh, thank you very much robert you've been very quiet but uh hopefully you are finding this informative as well um uh, the, the questions definitely help questions definitely help so uh guys feel free stay safe uh, happy trading and i'll speak to you all uh sam is saying is tradercast useful tool to find 
yes it is it's a it's a trading community we have uh, the, the broadcasts like the one that you saw uh, but for a three four five hours per day uh, so they they start in the morning and then in the afternoon we'll have some in the evening as well so um, and then we are posting everything in a community uh, the analysis and you can you're more, you, you'll find it highly educational uh, if you're new and uh, you might find it uh, actionable if you are active trading uh, a trader and uh, part of active trading community. But uh, thank you so much. Uh, feel free to speak to your FX Pro account manager and they'll tell you how to, how to access it. It's uh, ready for you. Um, absolutely not a problem at all, Sam. Uh, lovely talking to you guys. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Happy trading and... Uh, bye for now, and I'll speak to some of you tomorrow uh, during the broadcast or in the community and to some of you on Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.